Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today is the, finally, it's one month since I've done my first henna treatment. So I'm getting ready to do my second henna treatment. I'm actually prepping my henna right now. And what's different about this henna treatment is I'm actually going to be using Amla powder in it. Um, this is also known as uh, Indian Gooseberry. Now I'm going to get more into uh, omelet powder when I actually show you guys how I am mixing up my henna mixture this time because I'm using some different oils and things like that but several people mainly that follow me on Instagram because there was one night on Instagram where I was like raving about my henna um, several people had different questions so I think I'm going to be doing a little bit of a Q&A on whatever my most recent Ayurvedic treatment was for my hair growth just so people can understand what's going on when they tune into the next video because honestly Ayurvedic treatments are a lot like there's a lot of research there's a ton of different like herbs and things they all do different stuff and there's like side effects and then there's pros and there's cons and it's like it's a lot okay like it's a lot first question is how often should you use the henna Personally, I recommend doing it once a month, but honestly, anywhere in between that four to eight week range is perfect. Like you could do it once a month, once every two months, you know, every six weeks, whatever works best for you. Doing henna is a lot of work. Like it's messy. It takes mad time. Like, okay, I got off work at six today and I usually don't get off work at six. I process my henna for three hours and then I apply it to my hair which takes like maybe 30 minutes and then I leave it in my hair for three hours. So we're looking at a six and a half hour process. So it takes a long time. It's messy. It will dye whatever it touches. So unless you got 101 dirty ratty t-shirts lying around like <laughs> you're gonna mess up some of your clothes. It gets on everything no matter how careful you are. Like henna is a lot. So aside from that, it isn't a protein treatment, which is actually one of the questions that I got. Um, someone said they're protein sensitive. Is henna a protein treatment? It's not a protein treatment. It acts like a protein treatment in the way that it is strengthening. And basically, if your hair has gaps or you know, kind of breaks or crevices or anything like that that doesn't make it the strong strand of hair that it is, henna will wiggle its way up in there and it will fill in those gaps which is awesome so it's not a protein treatment but it acts in the same way that a protein treatment does in strengthening your hair but at the same time because it acts similar to a protein treatment it can be very drying for your hair which is why i would recommend it once a month once every two months or every six weeks or something within the four to eight week range so i have been doing mine well this is the second time i'm going to be doing mine but it's been four weeks since i've done the last one so that's why I'd say I would just recommend that as a good median kind of amount of time to do it. What I am going to start doing and I will show you guys when I do my first one is in between my henna treatments. I think maybe once every couple weeks um, or once a week. I haven't really figured it out just yet, but I'll talk about that more in the video. I will be doing a henna gloss on my hair. So I'm going to talk about that later when I do it and I'm going to show you guys how I do it, but that's what I'm going to be doing in between my henna treatments. So the next question that I got was, did henna dye or tint your hair and how do I prevent this? So somebody had asked me this question. I don't know if their hair was like light brown or what color it was. Henna will tint your hair. I think in the last video I didn't see a tint. I lied. When I got into the sun my hair was definitely a little reddish brown. For me I actually don't mind. I kind of think my dark hair is boring so I kind of enjoy the tint so I don't really care. Um, but other alternatives that you can do is you can do henna and follow up with indigo which is supposed to um, kind of combat that treatment I mean combat the dying part of the henna um, I'm not too familiar with indigo I just did a lot of research on what you can do if you don't want to tint your hair 
Um, so a lot of people do the henna and indigo. So I will find a good video on that and link that down below for you guys if you're really interested and you really like don't want the tint at all. Another thing you can try, I think it is called Cassia. I think it's a treatment similar to henna that doesn't dye your hair at all. So I will also find a good video on that and link that down below for you guys so you guys can get into that if you're not at all interested in the tint. Another question is, will it loosen my curl pattern? I've only done the henna the one time, but I did kind of significantly notice in a way after I used it that my curl pattern was a little bit different. I think it's gone back in a way. I don't, honestly, I don't really have any curls because my hair is a hot mess. Um, but basically what happens is it doesn't change your curl pattern. Like your hair won't go from 4C to 3A. Like that doesn't happen with the henna. Basically what it does is it loosens your curl pattern in the way where it stretches it so you have less shrinkage, I guess I could say. Um, so it is very possible with the consistency of using the henna treatment that your curls will loosen. But like I said, I'm going to be talking to you guys about our dear friend Amla here who I've mixed into my henna mixture this month and Amla actually is really good if you want to combat the loosening of your hair texture add some Amla to your henna. Now there are several ways that you can incorporate Amla into your hair care routine. You can incorporate it in your henna mask like I'm doing. You could use it as its own mask, you could use it as a tea, you could use it as an oil. But what Amla does for your hair is it strengthens your hair roots, which in turn reduces hair fall and unnecessary shedding. Um, if you have male or female pattern hair loss, it actually substantially slows that down. It increases your hair follicle count, which, hey, strengthened hair, hair growth. It reverses your gray hair and darkens your hair color, so it combats this effect of henna, which does dye your hair. Um, it also combats the loose and curl pattern, which comes from henna, which is why it can be very good to and beneficial to add it to your henna. It contains large amounts of vitamin C, which um, vitamin C is like anti-inflammatory. Um, it stimulates your growth tissues. It helps flatten and improve your hair cuticle layer. So it really reduces frizz and makes your hair look awesome. So it has a lot of vitamin C in, your, in the amla. Um, it nourishes your scalp. Ultimately, it promotes hair growth. It conditions your hair and, and then it, and in turn it balances your scalp as well, which is a good foundation for growing hair and retaining hair length. 